David Harris, uh, director of the Raleigh Ringers since our inception in 1990. I guess I got to introduced to handbells um, in Pennsylvania, growing up as a kid in middle school, church uh, bought a set of handbells. We didn't know exactly what to do with them, but um, uh, a group of us youth just got jumped right in and, and, and figured out and uh, became hooked on handbells at that time. So when my fiance at the time and I were looking, we had moved to Raleigh, we were looking for churches. Um, obviously the highest priority uh, criteria we were looking at was did the church have an active handbell program? And uh, we, found, we found one that did, and then we also kind of liked the minister too. So we joined that church, played bells for a couple years um, before the, uh, the leader, the, the, the director of several years decided to, um, to retire from directing the handbell group and uh, got my arm twisted to, uh, to become the director of that adult group. So at the church, the program grew from um, you know, about 11 ringers to, to two full choirs. Uh, of adult ringers that played on, that rehearsed on different nights. And uh, it was always disappointing to me that uh, at the end of the year, we had all of this repertoire with the same personnel that um, uh, under our belts and we weren't able to share it except in worship situations. So we put together what was called Summer Bell Fest for, for several summers. Before we broke up in uh, early June, we would pull back all of our repertoire uh, that we had played during during the year, except for some of the very seasonal things, and then add some secular pieces, a, a Sousa march or a show tune, that kind of thing, and did and did these little handbell concerts. So, really, those became very popular. People from the community came, and uh, that really was the beginnings of uh, the ideas of doing handbell concerts um, full time. So, in in the fall of 1989, we had started to think about. Uh, forming an independent group. And um, we had sent some letters out to the bell manufacturers asking them if they would like to support this idea through, uh, through letting us use some bells of theirs because we did not have any, obviously have any bells to, uh, to ring with uh, initially that we had owned. So uh, Malmark provided us a loan set of bells for six months starting in that January of 1990. And um, then we also put some ads in the paper and uh, through some little bit of networking through the handbell world, we, we advertised that we were gonna have auditions. And um, our goal was to have about 15 members. Um, 16 came to that first audition. We went for about an hour sight reading a bunch of music and uh, one of the participants came up and whispered in my ear that uh, she thought it probably wasn't gonna be for her. So she stepped aside and we had our 15 ringers. So that was the easiest year ever of auditions. So when we got the, the personnel decided of who was gonna ring, then it was, uh, the next step was to figure out how to actually structure and be organized. And uh, that was something we really didn't have to worry about in the church situation where we had you know, other administrative things and finances and so forth always covered by the uh, the umbrella organization, the, the church. So um, we borrowed some ideas from some other musical nonprofit groups in the area, the Raleigh Flute Association and a couple other groups, the Master Chorale, um, on, how, on how to structure, how to have a board of directors, what to put, what kind of content to put in, in bylaws, and just generally how to run that part of the business of the organization. Um, we really didn't get a lot of help from other handbell groups at the time because in 1990, there really weren't a lot of community groups. We could maybe find six or eight. Um, so we had to really borrow some ideas from other musical groups. As the Raleigh Ringers have evolved, we have uh, been able to help out a lot of other handbell groups. There are now probably well over 150 community groups around the country. And uh, they come to us, you know, often to get ideas of how, how we've structured, what things we've been through, lessons that we have learned, and we're always happy to share those with, with other groups that are just starting out. <laughs>